Governor Hochul, Mayor de Blasio, and Mayor-elect Eric Adams announced changes to COVID safety protocols in schools that take effect on Monday. It's coming right up, and this follows a holiday break that saw infection rates break records in New York City and across the state. Mark Cannizzaro is president of the Council of School Supervisors and Administrators. Now, he believes increased testing is necessary, but is also pushing for increased family consent. He joins us this morning. Thank you, sir. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm you know, great there's, today. There are thousands of parents out there right now who are extremely worried, maybe a little confused about what's going to happen on Monday and throughout this weekend. What's the clearest message you can send to them right now? Well, I mean, everyone's concerned. You know, we've had this sharp rise in, in uh, COVID numbers uh, quicker than we've ever seen them before. And of course, we're hoping that, that this uh, dies out as quickly as it, as it comes in. Um, we're trying to listen to the health experts and, and we're getting different uh, differences of opinion from, from them as well. But I think with the increased testing, uh, the access to home kits, uh, we have a good first step in identifying positive cases. Um, but we certainly do need more parents to consent to testing in schools so that we can, again, identify uh, positives before they begin to spread throughout a school building. Um, we're, we're also glad that staff is going to have better access to testing, and we would push for all staff to have access to testing um, whenever they desire to be tested. And, and that's a key point here that you're speaking about with the staffing, because even if you can get kids back in the building, if you don't have teachers to teach them, what good is it? How difficult are the staffing issues right now, especially when you talk about bringing in substitutes? I know that when you talk to teachers, that's a real concern for them, trying to bring in any backup options right now. Yeah, prior to the break, this was a big problem in, in many schools across the city. Um, you know, we hear all these numbers about uh, substitutes ready and, and willing to work, but it's really not accurate. We do not have as, enough substitutes out there to come and fill in, and not all of them are, are willing to do so uh, at this time because some of them are, are concerned as well. Um, so what we need is we need a, a good plan to make sure we have enough staff, and in certain situations, individual school situations where there is not enough staff, we need to act quickly and move those schools to remote for a day or two until we can make sure we have the staff because although we're concerned about safety with the COVID um, crisis, we're also concerned about safety if, safety if we do not have enough adults in a building to properly supervise the students. Certainly so. Mr. Canizaro, yesterday, Rochelle Walensky uh, said that they are not requiring testing to go back into school after the quarantine situation because people can test positive up to 12 weeks. Now, that throws a major wrench in your testing plan because you will unfortunately probably send home unnecessarily some staff and some students so how do you plan to deal with that well i mean look there is always no, nothing is perfect right and, and you have to do the best you possibly can to instill confidence in families and staff members that they're going to be safe so i mean you, you do the testing uh, if somebody had already been positive and have come back we understand that especially with the pcr test they may test positive again but the doctors will tell them when they are no longer infectious and if they are no longer symptomatic, when they can come back. But um, testing people ahead of time, I, I think, instills some confidence and, and may also remove people from a situation before they start to spread the virus. So while nothing is perfect, I think we just have to do the best we can and, and you know, listen to the folks that are directing us as far as uh, our doctors and, and make the decisions accordingly. Now, I know parents do have to give consent for their kids to be tested, which not all parents have done. What is your plan to increase the amount of parents that will opt into this? Yeah, I mean, I think we just have to educate them the best we can and, and try to get as many people uh, as possible to uh, opt into the testing. You know, when the city decided early on that they would not pro provide a remote option for students this year, well, that took away the testing mandate for students that do choose to attend. So it put us in a, in a kind of a difficult situation there, but I, we just need to educate people and, and get as many as possible to, uh, to agree to testing. You, you know, you, you touched on it there. When you talk about some of these remote options, is it even feasible to put a school into a remote option? I mean, we're seeing numbers increase like we haven't seen since the start of the pandemic. Is the school system even set up to go to remote like right now? And would that be something you'd want the incoming mayor to start to think about? Well, listen, we're, we're in a much better place than we were in 2020 when we had to go remote. Um, but we all understand that students in school is the certain, certainly the best option for, as, for most students. Um, but, you know, where we were coming into this school year, 
having the option to go remote for, for families that wanted it probably uh, would have made things a lot easier right now for many of us and for families as well. Um, and the only really uh, problem with the remote last year was the hybrid, the blended model, which mm. didn't work out well. But students choosing completely remote or completely in school uh, education, that can be done. It would just take some time right now to switch over. Uh, Ms. Kranz, I want to ask you lastly, yesterday we had a chance to talk to incoming controller Brad Lander. He kind of wanted to mandate uh, testing for staff and students coming in before school. Uh, that obviously did not pan out, and he wanted the option for parents to opt out of testing. Why did you guys not consider that plan and move forward with something like that? Well, I mean, first of all, when you say you guys consider, remember that the, the, the mayor and the chancellor are still in charge of the school system, and, and, mm. and we make recommendations, and we, we push them in certain directions. We really would have liked to see, and, and, and I recommended that at least all students get a, um, a home kit in their hands before they came back and, and were able to test on their own. Um, but, you know, they felt it wasn't practical. I think we could have done that this week with students coming in you know, a third of students coming in on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, just to pick up a test and go home and learn remotely for the couple of days and then test and come back on Thursday, you know, provided that they, they tested negative. Mm. Um, that was my suggestion, but I, I think that um, the powers that be felt it wasn't practical. There's no easy answers at all. Mark Canizaro, thank you so very much for joining us. Happy New Year to you, sir. Thank you, and Happy New Year to you, too. Thank you.